this is uh, this is definitely uh, an issue that needs to be uh, needs to be tackled head on, and that's why we have preferred to say that we are going to take action. We've gone f uh, additional funding for family protection on reserve, uh, additional funding for the Aboriginal Justice Strategy, millions of dollars that have been directly targeted at these specific issues. That's Mark Strahl, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs here on this program just a few moments ago. He says the federal government is making targeted investments to tackle the root causes of violence against Aboriginal women. Well, the RCMP report on murdered and missing women shows a disproportionately high number of Aboriginal victims, but shows the rate of solving the crimes is on par with cases involving non-Native women. So what does all this hard data mean for the push for a public inquiry? Is there indeed still a need? And if so, what would it accomplish? Joining me now is Gabrielle Scrimshaw. She is the president of the Aboriginal Professional Association of Canada. And I know, uh, Ms. Scrimshaw, that you do a lot of advocating as well for this issue. So, so tell me what you make of today's report by the RCMP into missing and murdered Aboriginal women. Well, first off, I think, um, like many people, the numbers were, for me, very startling. 1,181 reported uh, murdered missing Aboriginal people in this country. Um, second for me was, it was very surprising in some ways, some of the numbers that came out of this report. Um, the one being, you know, with homicides overall in this country trending down, Aboriginal women mm. um, as victims of homicide has actually uh, increased over the last several years. So, you know, while this answered some questions in terms of what the numbers were, this really raised a lot of other questions about why this is the case and what can be done to prevent it in the future. There were some suggestions of where those answers might lie, though. For instance, they talked about uh, how often these uh, victims know uh, the person who, uh, you know, uh, who killed them, how often they are acquaintances or family members. Um, so, it, I mean, it sort of points you in the right direction, does it not? Um, not, not that does, definitely doesn't give the whole picture because no. if you actually compare them to the non-Aboriginal cases, the non-Aboriginal victims um, who are you know reported missing mm -hmm. or homicide victims in this country, there was actually a lot of parallels between those cases in terms of, you know, having been acquaintances yeah. or if they were uh, within the family of the victim. So that although that gives a very very tiny. Um, sort of understanding of what the picture is, it certainly doesn't paint the whole picture. The report also shows, and we talked about this with MPs, that uh, the police have solved cases involving Aboriginal women and non-Aboriginal women, and it's almost the same rate in terms of uh, case solving. Do you think that there needs to be a national inquiry given that it does seem that police are doing the work? I think that there are two separate issues at play here. So one is once uh, the crime has already been committed, right? Mm -hmm. So once the homicide has already happened or once the missing persons report has been filed. And that's where we're seeing in terms of these solve rates where the numbers are actually um, in line with the non-Aboriginal population. So about nine out of 10 being solved. So that's a good story or a better story, I should say, sure, in terms of sure. the solve rate. But that definitely doesn't answer the overall picture of, you know, why are Aboriginal women anywhere from four to eight times more likely to be victims of homicide than non-Aboriginal women? Um, you know, what is the bigger picture that is that we're looking at um, for us to understand and better implement prevention issues? So that's where the need for a national inquiry would come in. So, the, you know, there's a lot of resistance to this, uh, from at least from the government. And, and it's sometimes hard for people to understand what would come out of a national inquiry. What sort of answers would you be looking for that would be that would come from an inquiry? Well, I think we just need to better understand um, what is the cause and effect relationship of why we see higher um, rates of homicide and missing persons cases for Aboriginal people. You know, the government had said in the statement from Minister McKay that this has been studied enough that now is the time for action. Believe me, nobody wants to see action on uh, Indigenous issues more in this country than myself and many other uh, uh, people within the Aboriginal community. But the fact of the matter is we can implement a strategy if we don't really understand what the cause is. Um, we can theorize and say, you know what, I think it's this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've done enough. But really, you know what, if we've done enough, why are the rates of homicide homicide for Aboriginal women on the rise, and why is this the case? If we don't have answers um, to those questions, we really can't start taking a step in a meaningful direction. You know that the government says that there have been 40 studies on this, that they've looked at it ad nauseum, that they believe this is, as you said, the time for action is now, that it doesn't need more studying, and that they've done certain things to target, for instance, mm -hmm. Aboriginal justice programs or matrimonial law on reserves. Um, how do you respond to that? The fact that there are statistics out, and we do have a sense of what's happening. 
Well, there's a few things that I would say to that. One, uh, you know, if this has been studied to death as the government is, uh, is trying to tell us, well, then why is it that when this report came out, you know, the number is close to 1,200 murdering missing mm -hmm. Aboriginal women, when two months ago the highest estimate that we had was 800, just over 800. So this is almost 50 percent more than what we thought it was just two months ago. If this has really been studied uh, in a meaningful way, we would have had those numbers. Now, the other thing I would point out is that one of those 40 reports that the government is speaking to is the Special uh, Commons Committee report on um, violence against Aboriginal women. Yeah. Now, that report, which was released uh, the day before International Women's Day, um, in the draft uh, form of that report, they'd actually recommended a national inquiry to, um, around murdered and missing Aboriginal women in this country. But then when they finally released uh, the final version of that report, they actually took it out. So, you know, does that really sound like a government that's trying to uh, meaningfully push this issue forward? So where do you think this goes from here then? What, what has to happen inside maybe Aboriginal communities or with other Canadians uh, to try and make this happen? Do you think that it's, it's possible? So first off, I think a couple of things have to happen. So one is you've seen an overwhelming majority within the Aboriginal community saying, you know what, we need a national inquiry into our murdered and missing sisters, daughters, aunties. Um, these are our family members. These are women. These are your neighbors. These are your customers. These are people in our communities. And we need to give them justice. And then building on that sentiment is you know, what I would encourage all Canadians to do. If we are a country that uh, really believes that diversity and inclusion are part of our you know, flag that we wave so proudly as a country, and we stand up for um, justice for women and children missing with girls around the world, that we should have the courage to stand up for the women and the girls in our own backyard. Um, and I think that, you know, one of the simple ways to do that is to put pen to paper, to write their local MP, yeah. and say that this is an issue that demands a national inquiry. Okay, Gabrielle Scrimshaw, I appreciate your perspective this afternoon. Thanks. Thank you.